All right, everybody, thanks for joining in. Uh, I know your screen says Leland, but it is Claude. Uh, we're going to begin uh, and uh, ask Coach Smart for any opening remarks you might like to make, and then we'll go to your questions. Coach Smart? All right, well, scrimmage one in the books. I was uh, proud of the effort uh, of our guys. It's been a stretch of uh, six, seven, eight practices in a row um, with one day off in between. Um, I thought it was really hot early out there, and the guys pushed through with good energy. Um, we had some good competitive drives. Uh, did some kicking situations as, as, as live as we can, very similar to how we do our um, our spring game. So uh, it was it was good. And then weather got us. We got a lightning strike within a uh, six-mile radius. And uh, I thought Ron and his staff did a tremendous job and the football operations staff, Josh Lee and his staff. We, we jumped on the buses, got back over, got in the indoor, and were started within 12 minutes of leaving the other field, which is important in terms of – not having to warm up again and do all those things. So we were able to complete our scrimmage uh, uh, inside and I thought the guys really competed hard. We had some good competitive uh, uh, drives and really situations, did a lot of situational football. But, you know, we have a long way to go. Uh, we're beat up a little bit at wide out. we got some injuries. So we don't have uh, all our guys out there. And uh, we, we got a lot of guys injured all around. But this time of year, I think everybody does. The most important thing for us is get some rest tomorrow, get healed up, and uh, we'll get back to work on Monday. All right, let's go to questions. We'll start out with uh, Mike Griffith, and then we'll go to Anthony Dasher. Coach, there's been a lot of speculation about the offensive line. Was any headway made there or any quick takeaway before you see the film? Hard without seeing the film, like you mentioned, uh, Mike. I, 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 the only thing I'd say is in the third down protection periods, I thought they did a nice job with the pocket. We, we were not exactly efficient on third down, you know, with our goal um, being to convert. You know, we, we want to be able to convert at a lot higher rate than we did today, but the pocket was good. Um, and we rolled guys in and out of there. You know, with Warren Erickson uh, being out, we worked uh, Jamari and Van Pram, both with the ones at center, uh, which has allowed us to work other tackles, you know, because Roderick has worked at tackle with, uh, with Jamari bumping inside some. And Truss has been able to work some at tackle and guard. Um, Amarius has been able to work at tackle alongside Warren McClendon. So, you know, center is one of those positions that you can't play with. Like you can't – you can play with a lot of different positions on the offensive line, but you better have a center because the play doesn't even get started without that. So, Blasky has worked there. Uh, Jared Wilson's even worked there some. But primarily it's been Jamari and uh, Van Pran as we work to get Warren back. But, you know, I thought that we ran the ball and made some holes um, in there. Uh, I thought we protected some consistently, uh, but we didn't make a lot of plays uh, in the passing game that, that I'd like to make. Uh, Coach, you mentioned uh, Warren Erickson. Kind of what is the update on his injury situation as far as the secondary goes? Just kind of what did you gather from, from those guys today? Uh, Warren, feel good about him. I mean, he's, he's actually – I mean, he's, he's a classic. He's behind the play. Uh, mimicking the snap, making his points, making his calls, looking at the defense from, you know, 30 yards back, taking every single rep uh, and practicing the, on air. Um, he has a cast. Uh, he's going to be able to uh, – it is his snapping hand that he has a cast on, but he actually has the ability to snap with right or left. So he's really working hard on being able to snap with his right. Um, he's going to be cleared to get back in the next week or so. It's just going to be a matter of playing with the cast. So we've had people play with that injury but we've never had a center with a snapping hand play with that injury. So that'll be the key. He may work some at guard um, with that uh, injury present. And then secondary-wise, um, you know, we, we didn't get stressed as we as we do sometimes out there. We didn't have as many uh, mismatches. And with some of those guys out, you know, Kiaris and uh, Burton being down right now, it probably wasn't as, as much skill. But they competed hard, played hard for a first scrimmage. Oh, we tackled okay. We got a long way to go tackle them, but most first scrimmages, my bar is not real high because we have not tackled live. We had to tackle live and thought they did some decent things. And uh, we have experience at the um, star and safety position. We just don't have a lot of experience at the corner position. Hey, let's go to Chip Towers and then Seth Emerson. Yeah, Kirby, you mentioned the weather. Uh, I think it might have been 93 or 95 degrees when you guys started and might have gotten up to 98 or 99 before – the storms rolled around. Um, is is that just how you want it? I mean, you like practicing in that to get your guys conditioned, uh, or, or it's just something you got to deal with. Yeah, perfectly, 
perfect to me would not be that hot because we don't typically play in it. So I like, you know, out of your first 15, 20 practices, what I call camp type practices, I want to be in the heat um, for several of those. Um, but I, I've never had a game that had to be played in that type of weather. I, I think I referenced to the players maybe two or three years ago at South Carolina. I thought it was really hot. The DeAndre Baker Debo game, second half. I mean, it was scolding hot. And I thought we were the more conditioned team. Um, I think that helps if you play in that. But it's also unrealistic because we're playing 22 players from Georgia every play. We're playing special teams back-to-back every play. And so sometimes you can't really measure a guy uh, how good he is in that kind of heat because he wouldn't play. But, you know, I mean, A.D. Mitchell, he's out there playing every snap. And in a game, he would be rotating. So it's hard to measure um, somebody in that kind of heat. But it definitely challenges our mental and physical toughness, which it did today for a little bit, but probably the last – 20 or 30 minutes before the weather, it cooled because of the wind and the breeze and, and the weather rolling in. So it wasn't near as bad. Kirby, I needed to ask about Eric Gilbert. Uh, what, what's going on with him right now? Yeah, Eric's we're dealing with some personal issues. And, uh, you know, we, 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 we love him. We're thinking about him. We're, we're, we're trying to help him. Uh, I think, you know, when you think about a medical staff like Ron Corson has, uh, he has so much experience. Uh, in dealing with these issues and uh, our thoughts and prayers are with him right now as he deals with those personal issues and we hope to get him back soon. Let's go to Mark Weiser and then uh, Dean Leggy. Kirby, what is uh, Will Muschamp's role now with Scott Cochran away and and who is overseeing the special teams? Uh, Who's keeping, you know, I guess, chipping in, I guess, and, and coaching that unit? Well, if you remember, we really never had just one special teams guy. I mean, Cochran had the title, but that wasn't the way it was anyway. So Todd Hartley um, did punt, and he continues to do that. He's helped out and stepped up uh, more in the other uh, phases, and it's really a total team effort. It always is. I mean, it was last year, you know, in, in the composite special teams rankings that we keep, which is just our own methods. We were number one in the SEC in special teams, uh, everything included, and – it wasn't all Coach Cochran, right? It was it was a lot of people doing it by committee. And uh, that's kind of the same way it is. Coach Muschamp's going to uh, reside over the other units. But to be honest with you, we have uh, a special person on our staff that was unbelievable last year. Um, ULL was one of the best teams in the country at the return unit. And Robbie Disher, the hire we made in the offseason, that he coaches the coaches. So he's there for Muschamp uh, with ideas. Most champs always been very involved in special teams. I think people think because you're a head coach, you're not special teams coach. You're probably more special teams when you're head coach than you are uh, uh, when you're the special teams coach. You know, and it's just I know Will ran his program very similar to how we run ours, and he was involved in those. So uh, I was very involved. But he brings a lot of energy to the meetings. I think the players respect him and the job he's done. And so far, I've been I've been really excited about the. It almost reinvigorate reinvigorated because. There's a new voice, and a lot of people are up there um, um, talking. They, they're sharing different voices every day, and the, the players are really competing. Kirby, a year ago, y'all were trying to figure out your situation at quarterback. Right now, I think it seems more more settled. How was JT today, and um, what does he need to get better on? Well, I'll have to watch it to really see that. You know, he's not playing with a full deck, if you follow what I'm saying. You know, he doesn't have all the weapons out there. Fitz was actually out, too, so – Fitz has got a, a, a foot sprain, and, and so we didn't have all the arsenal there. And um, JT understands that. He, he understands that we're going through the process of making good decisions. Um, and I'm really pleased with where JT is and his leadership in commanding the offense. But I think he'd admit that he, he could have a better today than we had today, and, and he knows that. And uh, that's not all on him. That's on everybody, including me, offensive staff, uh, and all the guys. To, to keep improving. And, and that's why we do this. We do this to find out where we are and uh, then we'll move from there. Let's go to Jake Rowe and then Charles Odom. Hey, Kirby. Uh, when, you, when you're talking about the offensive line, is, is it a situation up front where, you know, obviously the center position is something that you don't want to mess with, but are, are you guys – really honing in on trying to create depth across the front by, by all this rotation. Um, 
I'm sorry, I kind of lost my train of thought there. Are you are you trying to kind of uh, develop all this depth across the front with the rotation? And and do you feel like you feel good about anybody in particular at this point early in camp? Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna be honest. I feel I feel good about all those guys. I mean, the two D, we've got guys that have played. Uh, like like you know, Trust got some uh, really good experience against Cincinnati. Jamari has played a whole year at tackle. He's bounced in at guard. He's now playing center. I mean, I don't think you'll go anywhere in the country that you don't have moving parts because if you don't move anybody and somebody gets hurt, you just play the number two, he might not be the best player. So we, we've made a big-time effort to play guys at multiple positions, and everybody says, well, you got to get continuity. Well, yeah, I want to get continuity. But I know the, the the SEC and the rigors of it. There's going to be injuries. I mean, we've had them. Owen Condon's down right now. Owen Condon's playing tackle and guard. Owen Condon's not not out there right now. He's had a a good camp. He's bright. He's uh, he, he understands he can play uh, position versatility. So, I mean, I'm I'm pleased with where our guys are. But we got to get better. We're going to play one of the best fronts in the first game of the season that there may be in the country. So our guys have got to really hone in and and lock in and compete. I wanted to follow up on, on what you said about Erickson. Um, I don't remember ever hearing um, about a guy who could snap with either hand. Um, when he comes back, you said he's going to be cleared to play with the cast. Is he going to try to snap with the cast hand, or is he going to go with the other hand? Well, they call that amphibious or ambidextrous. I can't remember. But <laughs> I'm just kidding. My mom would be disappointed in me. Um, I don't know that. But if he doesn't snap it real good with the right, he won't be at center because it's going to be hard for him to snap it with his left. Okay. And I'm not saying that he's a, he's, he's, he, that he can snap with his uh, right right now. It's something he, he's working really hard on. I mean, the guy got surgery the next morning. He was up snapping with his right hand. So he's got time to really work hard at that. And he also uh, is going to work at guard, like we talked about. What is the difference in amphibious and ambidextrous? Nobody knows. This has become the best Zoom call. Ambidextrous is left and right. I'm just kidding. This is the best I really do know the difference. Sure, Kirby. Your mom's recording. Yeah. It's a frog. Let's go to Brandon Sudge and uh, Vance Levy. Hey, uh, Coach, I don't know if I can follow that up, but um, can you speak on kind of um, – Scott Cochran, like how important was it for you to kind of let him take that time and allow him that opportunity to say, hey, go take care of your mental health or personal issues or anything like that? Yeah, it's critical. I mean, I think uh, we all uh, deal with issues and problems within our own household and own families. And, and you know, that, that those are personal things. And uh, we're a family here and our players have, have really embraced that. You know, our players have really embraced the, the, the love, the affection, the, the, the struggles he's going through. And uh, we love him, you know, we, we, we love his family. We love his kids and we're going to be there to support him and them just like they're one of us. And uh, that, that, doesn't, that doesn't change. This team is uh, very well connected and they're very open and they have very intentional conversations um, at our night meetings. And that's something that, uh, that we've talked about across the board. Uh, Kirby, it sounds like it, there weren't a ton of big plays, but were there some on offense and did the defense get any turnovers and then finally uh, any special teams highlights from today's scrimmage? Best team highlight would be Paul was pretty consistent. I, I'm not sure exactly. I think he hit two 45-yarders, um, very, very accurate there. I thought Zirkle in the indoor hit a hit a good field goal. Uh, I don't know the length. It was pretty long. He hit it and, play, and, and, and uh, made a field goal of good distance. Thought our kickoffs were good hang times. Uh, Kamara had an excellent punt that that, that Gooch did backed up around the goal line. Um, he's got to he's got to continue to work on his consistency because some of his his best punts out punt the coverage. You know, you talk about distance and hang matching. Sometimes he just out kicks the coverage, and we got to have elite gunners. You know, we lost two of the best gunners in the world last year in Stokes and Tyson, and uh, we got to replace those guys for uh, for Kamara. Um, offensively, I thought Kenny hit a, a couple of wheel routes. Uh, Kenny McIntosh did a really nice job out of the backfield, made people miss. Um, I thought that uh, uh, made a play down the field. Justin Robinson made a nice play down the field. 
we had a couple interceptions. Some were on tip balls. I thought uh, uh, Jamon Johnson made a great play on uh, a pick. He's, he, he has flashed in camp. You know, this kid did not play his senior year. They canceled football, and so he didn't get to play. And I keep watching, and I'm like, man, who was 10? Man, who was that? Man, he flashes and makes plays. He and Smile are just so hardworking and tough and, and strike people that I feel like, you know, we got two good young players at linebacker uh, that are going to be good players. But nobody really stuck out or anything like that. There weren't a lot of turnovers in the, in the, in the scrimmage, but there weren't a lot of big plays either. Let's go to Davis Baker and then uh, Allison Mastrangelo. Hey, Coach. Uh, how did the guys respond to the media training they did with Maria Taylor this week? And did you think that that was more important this year with uh, NIL laws in place now? Yeah, our guys uh, do a great job with any speaker we've had. We've, we've, we've covered probably five or six different topics with our players uh, by way of uh, guest speakers. And they, they certainly like hearing guest speakers more than me, um, and especially Maria Taylor. So uh, Maria came in and they, they, she did a tremendous job. She represents our university in so many positive ways. She's able to draw on her experiences. Um, she's just an incredible ambassador for Georgia. And I know they loved it. They got a lot of small group time and uh, then they got some team time. And she got to speak a little bit about NIL, but that's not, you know, that's not her expertise. She's, she's more into uh, helping our guys represent the University of Georgia the right way. Hey, Kirby, uh, I am not ambidextrous. I'm a righty, but uh, <laughs> anyway. Are you amphibious? No, I mean, I like to. I surf, but that's as close as I get. Not a frog. But uh, anyway, I, I just wanted to ask you, you're just a couple weeks away from Clemson, uh, where do you think that your team right now is at their strongest and what's one area that you want to work on before Clemson? Well, our strongest area right now is connection. And I know it's not what you wanted to hear, but – that's, that's what I'm most proud of is the relationships and uh, how they feel about each other and being very intentional about the time we spend to know what we're fighting for. That, that pleases me the most. Um, the area we can work on the most, you know, uh, it's hard to pick one, but, I mean, depth at several positions is something I would be concerned with. I feel really good about the first 22 and a lot of different looks, but I don't feel great. Mm -hmm. Um, about the depth of our team and trying to get more plays to uh, – how should I say it? Um, get more players to play winning football so we can get where we need to go. All right, let's go to uh, David Pascal and then uh, back to Roddy Nabolsi. Hey, Kirby. Todd uh, the other day said that he's just so much further along now than he was a year ago given what everybody had to go through a year ago. I was curious, do you, does this feel normal after the first scrimmage? Do you feel like uh, kind of one of the previous pre-COVID years? And and if so, I was wondering if you are kind of, if you ever get ahead of things, like you've got experience and stuff like that, what are, what are some things you can do uh, if you ever feel ahead of schedule, if you ever feel that way? Yeah, I never feel that way. I mean, I certainly don't coming off of the years we've had recently. You know, there were some years there with uh, – Prom and Andrew and DeAndre Swift, all that crowd that you can say, well, we feel like we're ahead. We got a lot of guys that know what to do, but um, we weren't defensively. So we had to go kind of the, the defense's pace. I would have said this year, if we were perfectly healthy, that we would have been ahead offensively than, than we were defensively. But with some of the injuries, uh, it's forced some guys up. I mean, I liken what A.D. Mitchell's had to do this fall camp and spring, because he got spring to what, you know, Jermaine Burton was going through last year, you know, and I thought that uh, Moncton made a good decision to, to throw Jermaine out there and make him go play uh, early, you know, even the Arkansas game. And it was tough. We went through some growing pains. He missed some things. He didn't get some signals. He jumped off sides, but it paid off in the end because he got a lot more confidence. And we're trying to go through those same growing pains with some of those young guys uh, at wideout. But um, you never feel ahead. I certainly don't think you feel ahead as a coach. I do think – there's a time that, that uh, you, know, you can dial back the reins and get other guys ready and be smart for guys that have played you know, two and three years. We're kind of going back to this week as overall, not just the scrimmage today, but can you talk to us a little bit about what you saw or have seen in Jalen Kimber, Keely Ringo, Nylon Green, some of those guys you have working through the secondary and maybe a couple of your star guys? And was Darian Kendrick at the scrimmage today? Yeah, I'll start with DK. DK uh, had one of his best friends uh, pass away, and he's, he's practiced every practice with us. But today we, we, we excuse him to go to a funeral, and he'll be back uh, tonight. So 
but he was not there today. Um, he's done a good job, uh, to be honest with you. He's been very consistent, he's very intelligent. He comes from a good program. They play, you know, multiple coverages in the secondary. He learned, you know, if there was a concern that can he learn our stuff fast enough. That's not a concern. He's he's very intelligent. He understands that he he plays big, bigger than he is. He's physical. Um, uh, Keeley has done some good things. He's made some plays uh, out on the perimeter. He's got elite speed. Um, he continues to grow. People forget Keeley has not, you know, he's not played tackle football in really over two years because spring he missed so much time uh, with injuries. And now he's gone all the way through this point at camp. Um, he's gotten one scrimmage under his belt and he continues to work hard. He gets better with every rep. Um, Jalen Kimber is dealing with a shoulder injury. He's, he's banged up. Um, he was unable to go today. Um, LC Nylon are both in a growth process of learning. I think they're going to be good players. They're getting a lot of reps. And Kamari Laster is a guy that didn't get to play in uh, the spring. He wasn't here, but he's been a, a really surprise kind of highlight of, of camp of playing really well. He's, he's intentional. He's smart. He cares about special teams. He learns the first time you tell him. Uh, it's just another evidence of, if you go get smart students that can run, they can play. And uh, I think he's going to be a really good football player. So, and then Star, you know, Brittany and Taiki have split that time. Uh, I would say both those guys are, are neck and neck. And if you remember last year, you know, we had Webb and Tyreek Stevenson. They both played the star position in the same games. These guys are very similar in terms of not necessarily their skill set, but they're similar in that we may play them that way. And that gives Brittany the flexibility to go back at safety and provide us some depth. He, he played – safety in a couple games last year and uh, was able to play really well. So that's kind of, I think that's everything you asked for. I'm not sure. Thank you. Okay. We've got time for just one more question. Let's go to Palmer Toms. Yeah, Kirby, you mentioned uh, not having Burton there and, and Jackson today. What was it that kept Jermaine out and, and what's the status of Kyrus as he continues to return from his injury? Jermaine got a sprained ankle. I want to say the very first practice, maybe it's first or second. I'm not sure. But it was just a sprained ankle, and it was, you know, a tough one for him. And he's, he's worked hard. He's been in rehab. He's running. He's straight line. He's cutting. He's doing walkthroughs. He's getting all the reps. He just has not been able to go 100%. Uh, Kiers, as we were aware of, you know, we, we made, made a decision to uh, scope his knee a while back. We knew it would be slow coming back into camp. But he's actually – Kiers is doing things. He did seven on seven. He's catching punts. I mean, he's out there uh, going in a black shirt. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll gain him back and work him in more this week, and we hope to do the same with uh, Jermaine. He should be back, quick turnover. Thank you, Coach Smart. Thanks, everybody. Everybody have a great rest of the day. Stay dry. Thank you.